if you saw our episode about the secret deals that Ticketmaster is making that screwing over artists and the fans at the same time, then you already got the foundation and this episode's not gonna be too surprising to you, but we got into a deep dive and Jacory has stumbled across a clip that's broken down even more of the issue about this Ticketmaster situation. Stay tuned. Now, if you think tickets have been getting ridiculously expensive, they have. The average price for a popular concert has more than tripled since the mid-90s, vastly outpacing inflation, and that is before they hit the resale market. Before you hit the resale market, it's already crazy. Right? And prices for tickets are outpacing inflation. I know a lot of people think, oh, everything's going up for inflation. But it's crazy to see, like, okay, we're outpacing. So our feelings about, yo, these tickets are crazy prices is a real thing. And with huge artists starting to put tickets on sale for summer shows, that irritation is only likely to increase. So tonight, we thought we'd try and explain exactly why Bad Bunny tickets are so expensive. So by the way, we're going to be playing clips from last week tonight by John Oliver. Man, they broke this down so beautifully and obviously hilariously. But we're talking about topics like, one, why artists are stuck using Ticketmaster. They can't get up out of these these deals that are screwing them over. And then two, oh, allegedly, by the way. Y'all heard that? Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, <laughs> two, Justin Bieber allegedly scalping his own tickets. And three, y'all just got to stay tuned. But some real, real crazy stuff. But let's start with how fees are even collected in the first place when it comes to these tickets. When people hear what Ticketmaster's service charge is, you know, Ticketmaster was set up as a system where they took the heat for everybody. In that service charge are the credit card fees, the rebates to the buildings, rebates sometimes to artists, sometimes rebates to promoters. So Ticketmaster's been that, you know, we're like the IRS. We deliver bad news. So that's the CEO talking, all right, saying that, yo, we're just a bad guy. Mm -hmm. So all of y'all complaining the artist is still in good graces the all these other people are still in good graces but come on man y'all know what's really happening here we're really just a bad guy delivering the bad news and they pay us to be that guy but in that case if that really is the truth aren't you actually not doing your job you got to stay quiet if this is really your job <laughs> so you lose on both sides to me. Either y'all screwing people over or y'all screwing the people that y'all are in bed with over. And that's messed up. Yeah, I mean, I, I give it a bend for the doubt, man. I think this is an older, a older clip. I don't remember exactly what year uh, yeah. he said the CEO made it. To me, it sounds more like the artist of that of that yesteryear, that initial deal was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, we're going to make a little extra money and it's not going to affect us. And then... You know, now we are however many years later and it's coming back full circle to affect them in a way that I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they couldn't see coming back then, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man, <laughs> because it's crazy. Like, first of all, like for those of y'all who haven't really felt this pain, if you haven't seen that when you charge, I mean, when you try to pay for some concert tickets, like the ticket could be $50 and then you can have a $30 fee. Like, who's the fee? Like, this is just Ticketmaster? Like or you get they play they show one case where the actual fee was more than the ticket itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like this is crazy. And people don't have much of another option, so people are trying to blow it up, right? Call it a monopoly, et cetera. But you you are talking about Jacory, uh artists of yesteryear being cool with it, but you also are the one who put me on to to oh, this thing. To to the PJ. Yeah, to to them. So I don't know, man. <laughs> And the reason they cost so much on the secondary market is that you're paying exorbitant fees to the platform and might be buying from a broker or, in rare cases, even from the artists themselves. And this whole ecosystem enriches a lot of people who do not contribute anything to the actual show that you're paying to see. And at the centre of all of this is Ticketmaster. Man, it's benefiting a lot of people who don't contribute to the actual show. Not the production team, the artists. Right, like that's that's a that's a hell of a sentence right not there. Even the fans, it's just not the fans. It's just a <laughs> bunch of middlemen <laughs> chopping up, taking advantage of opportunity. That part's pretty crazy. Turbocharged to think about. many of the shitty practices that have now become industry standard. It's a beautiful sentence as well. Turbocharged many of the shitty sentences that become industry that now became industry standard. I think we should also continue to put those two and two together. Shitty practices that are now industry standard.
People act like industry standard is supposed to be the thing. I uh, no, just because it's a standard don't mean that it's my standard. The yeah, standard just means that we were all collectively beaten into agreeing to, uh, <laughs> agreeing to it. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> so yeah, this is an industry standard. I appreciate that information. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank, you. Grain. Thank you for letting me know how many people have been finessed, right? And I'm going to use that lesson to not be. <laughs> so what can we do? Well, Congress could inject transparency into this process by passing laws that require sites to disclose their fees up front, along with the identity of the seller on resale sites. But the truth is, much of the power here is actually in the hands of the artists. Uh Uh-oh, y'all hear that? Because the biggest ones could do things to tamp down the secondary market, like uh, making their tickets non-transferable, meaning resale is restricted. Bands like Pearl Jam have experimented with this. And before their 2020 tour was postponed, they even worked with Ticketmaster to create an online marketplace where fans could sell tickets that they didn't need, but with no additional fees and not for a profit. That seems like the model that everyone should be using here. But if regulators don't act and artists don't have the clout or the inclination to require companies to put those guardrails in place, I'm afraid you as a fan are going to remain vulnerable to the worst parts of this system. All right, look, artists, obviously everybody doesn't have the clout, as he said. Everybody um, doesn't have the ability to have that type of leverage. But it's interesting because you have people like this, all right, um, Pearl Jam, who have said, yo, we don't want to do this. We don't want to screw over our fans. We're not even benefiting. Y'all got a bunch of people making money that have nothing to do with this situation, making my fans mad. Man, fans are raging, like, in real life. You're looking at $500 per ticket. Who can afford that? For the amount that I'm paying to see any random band that's going on tour, they better be fucking serenading me. Why are Bad Buddy tickets so damn expensive? Actually, what's crazy about the Pearl Jam thing too is because I know we didn't go through the whole video, but in the in whatever part of it, he talks about how Pearl Jam was one of the first major acts to actively fight back against Ticketmaster. I believe he said it was like late '90s, maybe early 2000s when they tried. And if you paid attention to that last part of the story, yes, they have moved forward and have implemented better ticketing practices i've been able to negotiate a better ticketing practice for their fans but they still had to come back and go through Ticketmaster. Mm-hmm. so like we made the point because i think they stepped away from ticket as well so we made our point we step away we build our system and then eventually we have to come back and it's interesting to see that when they were like the young hot artists that didn't fly but when they became more seasoned and more veteranized then it became like all right well you know like all right, we'll fuck with y'all. Yeah, it just is what it is, bro. It's, I don't know, man. I think it's like, it's like, I can't tell if they, they won the battle and lost the war or, or is winning the war but lost the battle. I don't know which one of those is, but it feels like one of them. I don't know. I, could, I can see <laughs> that, well, one, right, they talked about how some people literally have the, well, no, a lot of artists, right, have these deals where you literally can't just go to a different ticketing t- yep, yep. um, option. So you can't just have a show somewhere and do it direct to fan or whatever when it comes to your, your tickets. A lot of big artists are going through that. So one, I wonder if they fought that and then Ticketmaster thought of legislation in some form or fashion, right? Or if they kept doing it, Ticketmaster acquiesced, but then it was just such a pain over time and now you're deeper into the industry you got other problems you know bigger fish to fry and they just bank on you having more to do in the same way a news story might um like let's just say you go viral in the news and it's something embarrassing about you in the same way the pr advice is like hey just chill out there's gonna be another moment that that actually takes over your moment just sit it out don't do anything crazy yeah Maybe Ticketmaster is just like, all right, we'll just wait till they have bigger problems in their life and they care about other stuff and then they don't really want to meddle too much in our operation. Yeah, I can see that because that is the part that stood out to me too is like, you know, I, I think it might have been a comment on this video or maybe something I saw somewhere else, but people were like, oh, like, you no, know, they won the fight. Like they got Ticketmaster to allow them to control ticket prices for their fans. And I was like, no, maybe that's the So they won the battle, but not the war. 
they won the individual battle. I can provide a better yeah. price for my fans, but it's like, but overall, Ticketmaster is like everybody else, and y'all don't, y'all don't get that. Showing deal. while they're showing people <laughs> that we can do this. Exactly. Look, look yeah. what we can do. Exactly. Not for you, but we can do it. Let's take a quick commercial break to talk about Spotify Discovery Mode, one of the most powerful tools when it comes to marketing music today because it puts your music in the algorithm on Spotify to be listened to along with music similar to you without you having to run ads, without you having to do any content at all, which is why a lot of artists tell me they love it. But a lot of artists don't necessarily have access to Spotify Discovery Mode unless you're a two loss user because with two loss all artists have a fair shot at getting access to spotify discovery mode just by submitting through them and they pitch all of their artist music to spotify to be considered for discovery mode so if you don't meet the criteria if you are in the position where some of the larger artists are sign up for two loss distribution at two loss.com that's t-o-o lost.com because that's just one of many extremely valuable features that two loss offers to his artists to make their lives easier and you can try out two loss for free by using the code no label that's n-o-l-a-b-e-l when you sign up so go to two loss.com and check out how you can get your music heard everywhere that actually reminds me, I saw a comment somewhere. Somebody said the CEO of Ticketmaster in 2009 advocated itemizing all tickets and a union for musicians. He was out in a year. <laughs> <laughs> like they said, oh, we got to get rid of you, bro. Like no problem, nah. you up there worried about the artist rights and making sure all the all the transparency is there for the public to see. Nah, you worry about the wrong thing, buddy. Nah, yeah, yeah. You forgot who who hired you, my guy. <laughs> let's, let's let's close out on this one right here though it's a bit like mickey mouse the point is brokers with their identities concealed can snap up large numbers of tickets and resell them at a massive markup and meanwhile the secondary market sites are themselves making money by charging a percentage on those ludicrous ticket prices we found a ticket for adele selling on SeatGeek for sixteen hundred and ninety dollars plus five hundred and thirty eight dollars in fees and look here is where we need to deal with an uncomfortable fact which is the question of what that ticket is actually worth because an economist will tell you it is worth whatever people will pay. So if someone is willing to spend over $2,000, including fees for an Adele ticket, that is what it's worth. Technically. Yeah, technically. Technically, that's a fact. As gross as that sounds. But if Adele doesn't want to charge that, there is going to be a gap between the face value of the ticket and what someone can get for it. And the whole industry is going to scramble in to exploit it. And unfortunately, live events are uniquely vulnerable to this because they are inherently rare. Bad Bunny for instance, is probably only coming to your town once a year at most, and a lot more people want to see him than there are seats. And while Bad Bunny could charge the going rate for every ticket that he sells, he probably doesn't want to do that because he'd look like an arsehole, which he very much isn't. Y'all He's don't not- want to look like assholes. They don't. Nobody wants to be the bad guy. Nobody wants to be the bad guy, and that's that's 100% understandable. Like, of course, we don't want to, like, you know, whether somebody, the artist, the, the management, the, the, the team that they're working with. Yeah, of course, you don't want to like just knock your fans over the head. You want to have everybody be, you want to have as much access as possible, right? I get that 100%. And I think that's the biggest issue. All right, we talked about that last episode that you create this brand perception or have some impact on our, my brand perception that I don't even profit from in any way. So, no, nah, I, I get that big time. But actually, we got to do one more thing. Talk about the beebs. Some artists have tried to sneakily get the scalper price for their tickets without anyone really noticing. Remember how Justin Bieber was supposedly selling out venues in seconds while tons of tickets were held back? At another stop on that same tour, reporters looked into some of the tickets on resale sites and found something surprising. Section 205, row G, 14 tickets listed for $246 each. And get this, ticketing documents showed that entire G row went to Bieber's own tour. I think there is no question when one looks at the document that Bieber is scalping his own tickets. Yeah, it's true. Dang. I mean. It's a wild allegation. I mean, you know, you know, I, I, could, I could see the sentiment, man. Like, these my fans. I'm, if anybody's going to violate them, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody gonna scam my fans is gonna be me. 
I'd say <laughs> if anybody's going to capture the margin of what they're willing to pay, it's going to be me. <laughs> and he's not the only artist who's done this, allegedly. They say that a lot of artists have done this, apparently. It's a relatively common practice, not necessarily frequent, but common enough where there's been multiple people who have done it here and there, particularly larger artists. My thing is, hey, look, if they're going to do it, again, the artist should be the ones who benefit from it. That just is what it is. Now, yeah, I mean, I, th- I don't know. To me, I think it's that simple. It's like, all right, that's just them making more money for the cost of the ticket. It's their show, right? You hate the deception on the fan side, but you only really could participate in that because the other scalpers exist, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So like, or probably wouldn't do that if the other scalpers didn't exist to the same degree. So when you know that's going to happen, I understand how it could at least be difficult to say, ah, am I just going to hold out of all of this? I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I look at it it's like, damn, bro, we we going twenty, thirty percent, sometimes higher. I mean, we seen the Adele t- ticket fees, but I w- I would like to make an extra five hundred <laughs> per ticket sold. You know what Man, I'm saying? Yeah. That'd be crazy. And that's to me is what's so interesting about this whole thing is like, it's like Ticketmaster wanted to make more money because of scalpers, but then they also are a part of the reason the scalping industry has become as, as big as it has as it has become. So it's like right. you are a part of the same problem that you helped create it. And actually he mentioned in this video, they end up jumping in it. You know, you can resell tickets on Ticketmaster now. Scalpers are just scalpers, you know, any scammer out for them, they they gonna do what they gotta do. We they're not they're not in the, the moral argument. And then artists are just, you know, left in this awkward position. You know, do I let Ticketmaster fuck me over or do I like you said, figure out how to fuck people over and cap before it. Shit, all of us get fucked over. It's basically that, do I get fucked over alongside y'all or do I step back and I just fuck y'all over before they can fuck me and you over? You know what I'm saying? It's a hard, it's a it's a hard position to be in. <laughs> it's a whole lot of, <laughs> a whole lot of fucking going on right there. <laughs> Sheesh. Hey man, what's, what's the thing that we, that, that they say now? Oh no, do you? And this is yet another episode of No <laughs> Labels Necessary. <laughs> we out. Peace. <laughs> Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is... We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.